Hey guys, how's it going? Chess back again with episode number 24 of the Tottenham Career Mode. And as you can see, we've had a message from the board saying that they're disappointed with the uh, with the results in the previous match, which was, of course, the 1-0 uh, defeat to Fulham following the uh, the one all draw with West Brom. So we dropped five points in the previous episode, and they want a better outcome in this particular game, which is against Southampton. So you can see we sat fifth in the table. Had we managed to get maximum points from the previous episode we would be sat fourth a point ahead of Arsenal so we really need to make sure that we can win this one against uh, against the Saints from Southampton so Soldado having the first chance decent shot but the goalkeeper does get down quite easily and comfortably to his left hand side to make a decent save to push it round the post for a corner but uh, we were going to have another attack here breaking down the left hand side with Nani he's going to whip the ball on his left foot stands the ball up beautifully and Soldado is not going to miss his second chance he rises wonderfully to power the ball into the back of the net really great leap on him and as you can see that's his 26th goal in all competitions so far this season he has been an absolute rock for us up front scoring goals in every single competition we played in the Premier League the FA Cup the Carling Cup or Capital One Cup, sorry, and the Europa League. So we wouldn't be where we are this year without him. But Ricky Lambert comes close here, does take a deflection off the defender, and we're fortunate that that one trickled on out for a corner. But as you can see, it's first half stoppage time. Adam Lallana is going to whip the ball in. It's going to be Hoyville that goes up for the uh, for the flicked on header. Osvaldo's at the back post, has a snapshot, and it's really disappointing from him. From him, he really would have wanted to hit the target there and get themselves back on level terms. But we went in at half time one 0 up thanks to that miss. But the uh, second half was just a wave after wave of Southampton attack, and a lot of it came through Morgan Schneider. And as you can see, he's breaking free here, plays through Osvaldo, and again it's a disappointing finish from him. Plays it straight at Hugo Lloris. When if he'd put it either side, there would have been nothing I could do. It would have been a certain goal. But Lalana plays in Schneiderlin again, pulling pulling the strings from that defensive midfield slot. Plays through Ricky Lambert, another player that you would expect to finish in that situation and he played, placed it high and wide of that far post. So uh, we were able to take three points from that one and I was absolutely delighted that he's going to keep the pressure up on Arsenal and Chelsea above us. Of course, we do still have games in hand as we get head into this game away at Stoke. You'll be able to see the league table again. We've got one game in hand on Arsenal now, just the point behind. We're level on games played with Chelsea and three points behind. So if they slip up, we're right there, ready to pounce. And if we can improve our goal difference, then hopefully we stand a good chance of getting above one, if not both of them, by the end of this particular season. But the Britannia is never an easy place to go. And we were actually fortunate enough to get off to a great start, though. Jermaine Defoe scoring a great shot from the edge of the box. That's kind of typical of him in real life, just picking the ball up on the edge of the box with a nice turn and then a powered finish with the lace shot into the bottom corner. And that was his 12th goal in all competitions. We almost sold him on in the summer. And uh, Stuttgart didn't get the deal wrapped up in time. Unfortunately for us, he, uh, he's been able to chip in with the goals and he and Jackson Martinez have done very well indeed since January to uh, to kind of support Roberto Soldado in that uh, in that goal scoring vein but Chiriches or Chiriches I'm not really too sure how to pronounce that to be completely honest the Romanian centre back uh, has a decent shot there with his left foot but it just trickles past the far post really disappointed that it wasn't able to go in the back of the net had it dropped to someone that was maybe a little bit more composed in front of goal then perhaps we might have stood a better chance but we got very very lucky there with that header going past the uh, the near post he headed it back across goal wrong footed the goalkeeper had no idea where it was going and uh, Fortunately for us, it went past the post and out for a goal kick. And we hit the post there for, with a shot from distance. So uh, it's end-to-end -end stuff, really, in the first half. Mami Baram Duf is going to play the ball round the corner to Wilkinson. It's going to bring it in. And uh, Duf is on the end of it again. He tries to just angle that header back towards the uh, the far post this time. Rather than going for that front post, goes for the back post. He just gets too little on it. Doesn't, uh, doesn't aim it too well towards that back post. And it just glances across the face of the goal and out for another goal kick and that's how we went in at half time into the second half we picked the ball up on from them in the midfield Nasser Chadley races away doesn't have a lot of pace but thankfully the Stoke defence don't have any either and he is able to just not necessarily pull away but just stay far enough in front of them so that he can get a decent shot off pop the ball into the back of the net and give us a 2-0 lead but Stephen Ireland was going to come on there and I left that uh, left that replay in and made the, uh, made the highlight a little bit longer because you can see what sort of impact Ireland has as he enters the game he's literally just come on. Matty Etherington's pushing down this left hand side. We get a tackle in, but it's not good enough. He then does the same defender again, stands the ball up. Stephen Ireland's in the box. He's only been on the pitch two minutes and he's brought Stoke back into the game. It's now 2 1, and they were pushing 
for an equaliser. Mark Wilson down the right-hand side into stop his time at the end of the first half. And Asaidi, had he been able to take that under control and pull it back, maybe they could have stood a chance of picking up an equaliser. But fortunately for us, he went for goal from an extremely tight angle, an impossible angle really, and it was a comfortable, easy save for Brad Friedel. And we take another set of three points, and that is exactly what we needed heading into the last game of the episode at home against Cardiff City. Now, Chelsea and Arsenal, as we head into this one, have matched our results. They've both won games as well, so we need to keep up the pressure on them by making sure that we take maximum points again from this particular episode. But Cardiff was so good. They've uh, they've been particularly good so far this year in real life in the Premier League. Uh, kind of surprising a few with their uh, their tenacity and their ability to kind of grind out results. They obviously beat Swansea last week, and uh, Nani goes close here, but David Marshall thwarted me all game long. He's done that in real life as well. It's kind of quite realistic in a way that David Marshall will make save after save after save, keeping Cardiff in games and uh, Lamella is going to have another chance here. Ball drops to him from the corner in the opening five minutes. Great shot and this time David Marshall tips it over the bar. Maybe a bit of a camera save, could have maybe caught it or just kind of stood there and tipped it over but went for the, went for the extravagant, jumped up and flicked it over. Uh, nonetheless we weren't able to take the lead and we weren't able to take the lead there either. Soldado not with the best of uh, connections on that header and it was an easy save for the goalkeeper so uh, it was a difficult start. We had some chances but they played a lovely lofty through ball to Peter Rudd in wingy here. Brings it down beautifully, breaks into the box, has the shot but uh, fortunately for us it goes under the Lloris and wide of the post. So that was a bit of a let off so uh, we kind of switched back to attacking mode and Christian Eriksen is going to play in Freddie Guarine and he's going to look for the shot although it ends up being a bit of a return ball to Christian Eriksen and he just can't quite get to the ball can't bring it down under his spell quick enough and the goalkeeper rushes out to get it clear and we go in at half time level at nil nil. but I was confident heading into the second half as you can see we would not had much of the ball we were having very very good chances eight shots four on target and uh, hopefully we can continue that into the second half but it was actually Cardiff that we're going to take the lead it's Gary Medell breaking down the right hand side kind of beats me all ends up I was a bit nervous as to uh, whether to dive into the challenge or not and I didn't and then uh, Theophile or Theophile Catherine Theophile or Theophile Catherine Ca Theophile Catherine um, puts the ball into the back of the net with a lovely left footed shot uh, kind of set up I think it's Nicky Maynard there just kind of drops the header down to him brings it down on his chest and then kind of strikes across the ball so it bends away from the goalkeeper into that top left hand corner and uh, we were down 1-0 down after a dominant first half display and that was actually going to get worse here on the hour mark ball comes in I don't know how Nicky Maynard has won that header I was telling Eunice the ball, Cabal to come towards the ball, rise and clear it, and he didn't. He just stood there and let Nicky Maynard run across the front of him. I was extremely disappointed with that. And we were going to have to call on Hugo Lloris a couple of times here again to make sure that they didn't make it 3-0 before uh, the game got completely out of our reach. And he made a couple of good saves there, especially the uh, the second one to tip it up away from goal, and then to get back on his feet to make sure that the uh, the rebound didn't go in as well. But we we're going to catch him on a counter attack here. Nanny breaking down the left hand side is going to cut inside the defence. McNaught and have a decent shot across goal, but again David Marshall's on hand to make a good save, and it's actually going to go all the way out for throw in, and the chance is gone. And then as you can see, we're heading into the last five minutes of the game now. It's getting a little bit desperate. Chris Eriksson plays in Soldado, a nice step over and a jink, and again the finish is left wanting. He's not accurate enough. He plays it straight of the goalkeeper and we actually lose this game 2-0 now I'm not too sure what uh, this particular animation was at the end it didn't really uh, come up with the you know the generic end of game cutscene where it says you know the scoreline etc I'm not too sure whether that's because we've confirmed European football for next year or what I, uh, there wasn't really any commentary over it either it was just crowd sounds but as you can see we do lose 2-0 we had a decent amount of chances and we weren't able to take them and as we head into the last episode of this particular season the last gameplay episode of this season we are all set on 36 points, one point behind Arsenal, two, three points behind Chelsea, four behind Manchester United. I think it's safe to say that Manchester City are deserved league victors. They have won the title, being seven points clear of Man United in second with just two games to go. So congratulations to them, but we've got it all to do in those last two games. We've got to hope that, uh, that we can pick up four maximum points and that Arsenal or Chelsea or both slip up and drop points and we can capitalise on that. So it's going to be really, really, uh, really, really tight as we come back to this series next Monday of course tomorrow will be Pac-Man and then I've got a pack opening for you on Sunday as well so do be sure to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already so you don't miss out on any of that there will be a link to it do so in the description and an annotation on screen on the end slate. And there will also be an annotation on the end slate to the previous episode in this series if you missed it, which came out yesterday. So do feel free to click on that and check that video out. But if you enjoyed this one, then of course feel free to leave the video a like as well. That would be absolutely superb. And I will see you tomorrow.